That's a lot of me out of I found a bunch of toxic May apples and I want to eat as many as I can before I get ill and die. So I found a pile of May apples out in the woods and these th smell fantastic. They smell like a cross between a pineapple and a passion fruit from the tropics. Amazing fruit to find in the woods in Canada and also it's found in some parts of the United States. It looks like a lemon. I'm not going to go through the identification process, that's up to you. If you want to find these toxic May apples, you go right ahead. But I did find a bunch. I ate two a few days ago. I ate the seeds, the whole fruit, everything but the skin, and I was fine. The wild edible literature makes me laugh. And not because it's necessarily wrong, but because the people writing these things have absolutely no experience with the fruit. They don't even bother to eat it, and they just are an auto-repeat. They get from one source to another source and they repeat over and over again the same things. Is there any foundation in this? Will these fruit actually make you sick? Or are they just great to eat? That's the question. And I ordinarily wouldn't care about these fruit, but I collected a pile of them in just about 10 minutes and they smell great and so far they taste great. But the real question is, in large quantities, will they kill me? Reports say that the green ones will make you ill, but the ripe ones, the mushy ones, the overripe ones, in large quantities will make you sick. But is that true? I don't know. And probably neither does anybody else, especially the people writing about it. Now the literature also reports that the stems, leaves, and roots are, are also poisonous. Are those reports true? I'll never know. Why? Because I'm not going to bother to test them. I have absolutely no interest in anything other than things that give me sustenance. And if I found these in the woods, and I had to ignore all of them, because I thought they were poisonous, that would be a problem for me. But ignoring stems, roots, and leaves, I don't care. So I've already eaten one entire fruit, including the seeds. I've removed the skin and ate it. The second fruit, I removed the skin and seeds and ate it. A couple days later and I'm still fine. So the question is, how many of these can I eat before I get sick? So my experiment today is going to involve eating four. I ate two, four, the next day I'll increase the dosage until I get sick. Let's see if the literature is true. These taste fantastic, like a tropical fruit. And be careful not to swallow the seeds. It's a mouthful, so I'm not eating the seeds. <clears throat> That's two down, two to go. Now the report suggests that eating the toxic parts of the plant or the fruit in quantity will give you forced diarrhea, vomiting, and who knows what else. But the reports were so vague that I just started to disbelieve them. I also read an account by Sam Thayer, author of The Forager's Harvest, and he suggested that he ate a bunch of them and they didn't cause him any problems at all. And as mentioned, my early experience proved no issues at all. Did I mention these taste fantastic? Why would a plant go through the hassle of making something so tasty if it didn't want an animal to eat it? Plants use good taste to disperse seeds. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Now I'm not suggesting that you should go out and eat a bunch of May apples just because I did. Because that might make you sick. But what I am telling you is that you can't always believe something just because it's repeated 10,000 times. So what's the real reason I'm doing this? It's because I want to know if I react negatively to May apple. And I'm doing this so that you don't have to go through the trouble. Here comes number four. And you'll have to excuse all the city noise. I am in my city right now. I'll be back another day to test another bunch. I might even get aggressive and test the seeds too.
So this is day three, I guess. First day I ate two, one including the seeds. Second day I ate four. Uh, I had no effects yesterday. Everything was fine. Didn't feel any symptoms. So today I mashed up 11 small sized fruit. Excuse the noise. I am uh, just at my house. I was lazy today. I didn't want to go to the bush just to drink a bunch of juice. So what I did was I mashed up the 10 in a pot, boiled it or simmered it for a few minutes just to loosen it up. And then I put it through a masher down to a pulp. So this is the complete juice from 10 or 11 small sized May apples. Smells pretty good. So 10 fruit, probably not something you would ordinarily consume, but here goes. If I get brave, I might actually do the seeds next day. That should be interesting. It's really good like that actually. It's like a lumpy tropical drink. It's very surprising that you can find this in the Canadian woods and most of the US on the eastern side. I'll report back tomorrow with my findings. I'm doing these experiments so you don't have to. 10 fruit down the hatch, minus the seeds. Fine. So I ate 11 yesterday. 11 about the size of a golf ball, crushed as you saw, and heated up and strained of the seeds. And I'm fine. I'm getting kind of low. Some of them are starting to spoil and rotten. So this experiment will soon come to a conclusion. Today I decided it's time to eat the whole thing, seeds and all. Empty. A whole seed and everything. That's one. Number two. Kind of tastes like fridge now. Kind of sad. Comes number three. Ah, the heck, I'll do four. So here comes number four. These are really good when you don't have to sort up the seeds. Four May apples, seeds included. I still have a lot left. Maybe I'll make some jelly with these. Welcome back. I'm not sure what the magic number is. We're eating seeds again. I did four the other day. It's one. These are starting to taste like fridge. Two. Three. No effects yesterday from four. So four should be fine. Four. Ooh, these don't taste that great anymore. I've been in the fridge for too long. Five. Six. Eight. Nine. 
time. Ten. Safe to eat in limited quantities. What's a limited quantity? Check back in tomorrow. This is day something or other. I've eaten a lot of May apples. I am now tired of eating May apples. I want to conclude my studies of May apples and the effects and toxicity on the human body. I would like to report that I've had no ill effects from eating May apple. None at all. Nothing. I have here 27 May apples. That's a lot of May apples. I'm not sure if I want to consume 27 May apples in one sitting, ever. I ate 11 yesterday or 10 or something like that. I'm thinking about eating all 27 because I think that would match the threshold of reasonable quantity of May apples. Let's start off with the fattest one and we'll see where we go with this. I will be consuming the seeds as well. That's one May apple. 27 May apple. Now if I don't get sick from 27 May apple, including the seeds, there's probably not a reasonable amount of May apples that one would want to consume. Without getting sick. I feel sick from volume. 27 May apple. Tomorrow, I'll report my final findings. If I don't puke from volume, or worse, that's a lot of May apple. Ugh. So maybe you think it's a little stupid to eat all those May apples, but I had it on a hunch that they wouldn't bother me. A lot of resources on the internet said that May apples were toxic, especially in large quantities. Now, is 27 May apple, including the seeds, a large quantity? Probably. I mean, it made me sick just eating that much volume. Not physically sick, just a little bit stuffed. So, why did I decide to eat all this May apple? Well, because there's a crow coming to visit. I thought it was interesting that the sources kind of conflicted. Now, the, the sources that wrote, wrote about May Apple said that May Apple were toxic, but anybody who accidentally tried May Apple reported that they didn't rec receive any ill symptoms. And that was mostly in the comments to some of the articles written on the internet. Now, I also have a couple sources. Um, Sam Thayer, the only books on wild edibles that I'll <coughs> recommend is Nature's Garden, The Forager's Harvest. These are the original two. There's a third book coming out, which I'll talk about in a second. Author Sam Thayer. I've communicated with Sam Thayer a few times over email. These are excellent resources. I've read dozens of books on wild edibles. My library has the classics. I read all of them. They're references, they're resources, but they're repeated resources. Whereas this, these books by Sam Thayer use actual accounts. He actually handles the wild edibles and eats them and reports on them. And he uses, he experiences them more than once. The books I read before are encyclopedias. They do research, they collect information, and they regurgitate the information that's already out there. No primary experience, or very little primary experience, and sometimes none at all, which might be surprising considering you'd think that these authors would go out and research themselves, but they didn't. And just like I did, 
I've added now to the library of knowledge about wild edibles by consuming an excessive amount of May apples and reporting on them. Now, this isn't to say that I'm going to tell you that May apples are safe to eat because I'm not an expert on May apple. And I haven't seen other people eat them and check their reaction to them. And as we all know, people have a wide tolerance for foods. So some people might experience negative effects with May apples. I didn't, and I took that risk. So now I know that if I sample May apple from that species and that location, I'll probably be fine. Now, if I go to another place and try a May apple, I might not come out the same. I might have a negative reaction to them, but I didn't. So this all to say that May apple to me is not toxic. To you, it might be, but also want to bring out the second point, which is that the resources that are out there are sometimes misinformed and sometimes aren't even informed at all. They're simply repeating what's already out there. So I want to do a recommendation for Sam's books. I've been meaning to do it for a long time. The Forager's Harvest and Nature's Gardens are two excellent resources. There's a third book coming out. I want to make sure I get this right. I've got notes all over the place on various things that are rattling around in my brain. So Sam's, Sam's next book is due out in November of this year, 2017. It's going to be titled Incredible Wild Edibles. It's 36 of the best wild edible plants in North America. I can't expect that this book's going to be um, something that I won't recommend considering Sam's put so much effort into these two books already. He's sending me an advanced copy. I'll be sure to do a review on it. Uh, I'll put a link down at the bottom. You're welcome to uh, click over there, get your advanced copy. And uh, it, I can say it'll be out in October or November. 36 of the best wild edible plants in North America is gonna include fruits, berries, nuts, shoots, greens, roots, herbs, etc. 36 of the best wild edibles. And so I presume it'll be some of the newer things that aren't covered in these two books. These books cover almost everything that you could ever possibly want to eat. If it's not included in these two books, chances are it's probably not something that you want to consume. And there's a lot of things in the other books that you do not want to consume. They're just not worth it. And I was surprised by the vast amounts of uh, resources that seem to be out there. And then when I go and hit the woods and realize, wait a second, this isn't worth collecting. This isn't worth consuming. Why are the, these book recommending I look at these and find these and identify these when they're not worth it? Sam goes through the tedious exercise of collecting and processing to consume them in a way that is palatable. So if Sam doesn't have it in these books, then they're not worth looking for. So shout out to Sam Thayer. Thank you for all the work that you do. I hope uh, my little experiment with May Apple has enlightened some of the viewers and they get something out of it as well. And I hope I've added a little, my little bit to the wild edible resources with this little experiment. So thank you. You've just been trolled. May apples didn't make me sick at all.